Today I've received the Sinopoly Life Pool 4 cells and the first thing we need to do is measure the voltage of each cell before we do anything with them and that's just like for warranty purposes. I bought them from the eBay seller Indra Limited uh, and it seems like a decent seller so we'll get these opened up and checked. So here's what we have, we have um, some nice uh, copper terminal bus bars. Not sure if they're copper plated or um, solid copper, probably solid copper. And some nice bolts there. And obviously the cells themselves. Uh, these are 40 amp hours and I've got 16 of them. So uh, all we need to do is just read the voltage of each one. Uh, if it's much below 3 then you're probably as well uh, rejecting them because they're maybe damaged. Well, not physically damaged obviously, but they've, there's maybe a fault somewhere. But yeah, that's some there. So we just need to measure each one now. Uh, that'll take a little while. So I'll set my multimeter up to 20 volt range. Just put the probes on that. Oh. 3.26 which is an acceptable voltage so I just need to repeat for the whole lot and the thing is with LiPo 4 um, it's very difficult to know what state of charge they're at because even if they're at a very low state of charge they'll still read about 3. Point well, 3.26, 3.3, uh, so it's, it could be a difficult chemistry to work with because uh, no matter whether it's 100% state of charge or 10% state of charge, it's still going to read 3.26 and that's after it's settled, that's under no load. Uh, so the only way really to know is um, while it's uh, is looking at the voltage under load, uh, you can get a good idea of how much as in your battery, or you could use um, Coulomb counting, which is just basically a watt meter which would count the amperes in and the amperes out, and that would give you a better idea. They all seem to be exa exactly 3.26, so I'm really happy with that. Um, the reason I've decided to go with a smaller battery bank is because uh, Prices are just too high just now, uh, and I wasn't wanting to take the risk on the Mitsubishi Outlander battery just in case there was something wrong with it, because it was likely the car had been involved in an accident and there's every possibility that there, that there was maybe something wrong with it, and I didn't want all the hassle and stress of having to get that returned or refunds and all that nonsense. So all these cells seem happy, I can't see that there's any that are faulty Three point two six, three point two seven, zero point zero one of a volt difference between them nothing wrong with that at all now I've got a battery management solution just now uh, it's not my final one though, I still need to make up Arduino based balance modules. Uh, I'll do a tutorial on that. I've got a system designed which will allow me to balance each cell. You could top balance or bottom balance, but in my case, I'll be top balancing because uh, I'm never going to be fully discharging the cells anyway, or fully charging them really. Um, with bottom balancing, when you fully charge them, some cells could go over voltage. Um, but with top balancing, at least you're keeping the fully charged voltage in check. But with, then with top balancing, if there's slight differences in capacity, one or more cells could go under voltage and then become damaged that way. So I'll use a cell log 8M device to monitor all the cells. Right, so I'm happy with that. Uh, the voltages are fine. What needs to be done now is it's going to be eight series two parallel arrangement so two in parallel so it's just like eight in series but just to make up an 80 amp hour battery so i've got to get that built now 
the Trojan T105s, I'm not sure whether I should sell them. I probably will. I might get um, £280 for the whole lot of them. Um, I don't know. They still seem to be in very good condition. Um, so what I'll probably do is um, take these uh, LiPo batteries offline and then just put that shipping box just in there. I'll just shove it in there and then just have have the battery there, it's not that heavy at all and it's got a nice big wooden support underneath it so I'll put that there, put the bike battery somewhere else and um, I'll probably eventually end up down there uh, once I get these Trojan bat batteries si um, sold ok so the batteries are now all linked together uh, but obviously I'm a little bit short on uh, straps so I'm making up some of my own. To do that I've got 15mm copper pipe, uh, cut a section just exactly the same as one of the standard straps that came with the battery and then I flattened the section in the vise, uh, got it really nice and flat and then I just filed the edges just to sort of like cut it so it was, was just a flattened bit of pipe but I filed off the edges on both sides and I effectively just cut it so out of each section I'll be able to make two straps now it's not as if I'm going to be putting hundreds of amps through it or anything uh, so I'm just going to, so these can be quite thin but they're also quite thin and wide as well so they'll still be able to carry uh, the current really easily so I'll go over the process a little bit better uh, I simply cut off uh, a piece of pipe that is the same length as the bus bar so all I'm going to do is flatten that in a vise now next I just place the bus bar on top and then I just mark the holes and then drill them exactly the same and then once that's marked we just place it in the vise and then drill a six millimeter hole through and then we'll use a round file just to make the hole um, well the hole more uh, oval shaped once we have the holes drilled, all we'll do now is file the edge until um, it splits the two halves and we'll do that on both sides. And there we have it, the finished product. You could also put heat shrink uh, across the middle. Okay, so everything is all connected up and is now um, ready to be charged. So I've got my battery monitors here. The reason I'm using two is because they can only do six cells, so um, I've had to use two. Um, and I've set the charge of voltage to 28.4, so that's about 3.55 per cell. I'm not wanting to take it all the way up to 3.6, um, because uh, the, the higher voltage you charge them to, um, the more capacity you get, but the shorter the cycle life. But for the initial charge, I'll take it up to 3.55. They're now charging, they were just put on a few seconds ago and uh, I'm just taking the power out of these batteries so when this one gets down to about 22.4 I'll stop. Um, we're charging at just 200 watts just now and that's probably going to take a few hours anyway because these bat batteries probably ar arrived uh, a bit less than 50% charged. Uh, so even under that charging power they're still pretty low so well they're just about at their normal their nominal voltage uh, they're 3.2 volt cells but they're up at 3.3 .3 just now so uh, that'll just have to be left in actual fact what I'll do is um, when uh, the LiPo batteries get down to about storage voltage of 3.8 per cell um, that's when I will stop charging using those and then just put these into the and then just connect these to the solar charge controller directly and I could just charge it tomorrow off the sun yeah that's probably the better idea but uh, yeah the voltage has taken a very long time to rise uh, which is a good thing because uh, that means that they're accepting charge really well but it is only 7.4 amps that's going into it just now and it's an 80 amp hour battery 
Okay, so that's them all pretty much installed now. Um, I'm just going to keep them in a shipping container. Uh, so I've got the balance leads come out there. Uh, and I had them in charge and I'd put about 600 watt hours of energy into them before the LiPo batteries started getting to their storage voltage. And then, and then this piece of crap just failed. Uh, stay away from these watt meters because they're just rubbish. They're either very inaccurate or you put power to them and the screen just flickers and it comes on eventually or else they just fail in some other way. So what meters of this style are to be avoided? But that's them all there like that. And I've just uh, basically soldered the balance leads on and, and in some cases I've just uh, screwed them under the terminals really tightly. Uh, and that's all ready to go. So I'm going to plug the balancers in. Uh, that won't be my final uh, arrangement though, using uh, this balancer. I'll eventually make up my own Arduino based balancing modules. So on the balancers, uh, I'm going to set the balance voltage limit to uh, uh, 3.4 so that they're only balancing really when the batteries are um, getting brought up to their uh, charge voltage because they'll sit at about 3.3. Regardless of what state of charge they're at when they're under no load, uh, and if they're balancing, if you're balancing the cells it's down to maybe three point three volts and lower, you could actually be unbalancing them, even though their voltages are the same, due to the differences in capacity. When you charge them again, uh, when they get up into their um, three point five and three point six volts, it could start going out of balance, and that's what happened with my lipo batteries actually. I was balancing them down to about uh, 3.8 per cell. I was doing the balancing down there, and when it got up to about 4, they were like 0 0.06 volts out of balance, which is uh, quite large in balance. We don't worry about the discharge voltage, uh, so, and then we just select balance, and we just leave them sitting like that. I stuck LEDs on one of them. Uh, I wanted to do it with the other one, but I had already stuck it onto the heatsink, so I couldn't really uh, get my soldering iron in. So these would actually flash when it's balancing any of the cells. So now what I'm going to do is just connect it up to the solar charge controller uh, and then charge them tomorrow. Right, so now it's time to put in the voltage settings. So. To charge it, I want to charge at 3.45 per cell normally, so I'll set the voltage to 27.6 for 8 cells. Float, I'm just going to use 3.3 .3 per cell, uh, so that'll be 26.4. That's fine. Uh, that's all settings put in. We we'll also need to uh, do the rebulk voltage, which is when it will go, when, is it, when basically it will come out of float, the voltage at which it will uh, sort of come out of the float charge and go back into a sort of bulk charge again. So we want to make that 24.8. So. I need to do is set my equalised voltage, so uh, to that I'll go into menu again, go to EQ and that's just going to be 3.6 per cell which is actually the recommended charge voltage so I'll do the sort of equalised tomorrow so and that's just so I can get them all top balanced so that's 28.8 Yeah, one hour will be fine. So uh, we'll just leave that as it is. We don't want to do an equalise just right now. So I'm just going to set this <coughs> absorb time parameter to one hour. 
and that's just the time that it's holding it at the full charge voltage that I set. Uh, the absorbed voltage, and that is um, 3.45 per cell, 27.6, and I'm just using 3.45 to extend the battery life. Goes from 3.45 to 3.6 volts charging. You're not getting very much extra energy at all, so it's not really there's no really any point. Or you could do an absorb end amps, it's time or amps, it's up to you. So um, I'm just leaving that at zero because uh, I just wanted to do it for an hour. And uh, we've already played about with that, so that's fine, that's all set up. And I'll do another video tomorrow uh, showing, showing them all charging off solar and hopefully getting them all equalised up and balanced properly.